Have you ever needed to train a number of new employees fairly quickly? Maybe you have a safety initiative or a new product launch, or maybe you have seasonal workers. Maybe you're in a classroom environment and you have students that are struggling, so you need to provide them with some extra resources. Maybe you have students that aren't struggling, they're actually bored in class and you wanna provide them with some challenging material so that they can get ahead with the subject matter that you're teaching. And while it might sound like a good idea to have all of these additional resources for all of these scenarios, it might also seem like something that would take a lot of time and work. So we have a challenge because we know that having these resources will save us a lot of time in the long run because you'll be able to provide pre-training, support training, re-engagement training if you need to retrain on a topic. You'll be able to provide the right training at the right time for the right student. And I know that I've often had these challenges myself, both when I was training in more of a corporate environment, as well as the educational institutions that I train in. And I'm gonna show you a tool that I do wish I'd had a lot earlier in my career, and I'm certainly glad that I have now. It's something that I can use right from a web browser, instead of having to download and install any software. It's a tool that has built-in AI, so I can create content quickly. It integrates with other tools. It's SCORM compliant. It integrates with LMS systems and such. Has a low learning curve, so I can create content really quickly. And it even offers the ability to collaborate with others so that we can make the best training product possible. Now, to best understand this tool, I'm gonna to do a demo of the tool in action. I'm gonna show you how I can actually create a course. Let's imagine that I wanna have a hiking trip. I'm planning it for a group of students. And before we go on the trip, I wanna make sure that I do some micro training on different aspects of hiking and camping so we can have a better experience on the trip. Everybody can be safe and that they can really understand some of the things they need to know before we go. But they're busy. They have regular classes. They need to be able to take this training on their schedule in small little device, in small little chunks on whatever device that they might have, a mobile device, a computer. I also want to make sure that the training's fun and engaging so that they actually do engage and complete the training. And that might sound like a lot to ask, and we're going to see how it's completely possible by using this tool. And I could do a larger course, so I could do a, this tool certainly supports a larger course uh, that's beyond just a micro course like I'm going to demonstrate today. But it's, it's something that will really speed up my training and really be able to allow me to get training out to, to employees or students whenever I'd like. The most important thing when you see me using this tool is not just all of the cool features I'll show you, but also I want you to imagine that you're creating your own content using this tool. Maybe you're in charge of a group of employees or maybe you're a supervisor. Maybe you wanna help some of your students if you're a classroom teacher, depending on what type of training you're doing. But anyways, I've waited long enough to tell you about this tool. It's called iSpring Pages. They've been a sponsor of the channel. iSpring has been a sponsor of the channel and I have several videos here on the channel about iSpring tools. So thank you once again, iSpring. This is a tool that I believe very strongly in. So let's take a look at it in action. I've logged into the iSpring website, the iSpring page website, and I can see recent projects that I've worked on, any projects that I star, anything that's been shared with me. Uh, you can see there's a sample project in here on social engineering. I can look and create my own learning content, users, settings, uh, make changes to the account, the interface. I can go in and see what I have created and even you know check on my account and such and modify the way that I look for projects. I don't have too much here, so I'm gonna start a new project and we're gonna create a project here called uh, for the hiking club on bear safety. And the nice thing here is I'm doing this all within a web interface. I do not have to download any products. I'm just creating this. I'm going to go in, I could add collaborators, maybe people just to view and give me feedback, but I'm gonna create this project on my own here. And when I go in here, again, I can get back to the manage project screen here and make changes if I need to add collaborators and so on. So you can always change your mind later. I can upload content. Let's go ahead and create a page so I can create a page or a quiz. And when I create the page, what I'm going to do is outline my course uh, right at the beginning. So I like to kind of create a framework here where I'll create an introduction and then I'll create the chapters of my little micro course. Again, this could be a much larger course if I wanted to, but I'm going to make this three different modules on bear safety for the hiking club. And I'm just going to create the outline right now. So the first thing is the introduction. It's going to be on bear safety. I'm going to create a new chapter on uh, why we hike 
to create some excitement for why we hike because we want to see nature we want to get out there and, and see the great outdoors so again i'm just creating the framework here just make sure that it's going to have some structure to it i'm going to put in another chapter after why we hike and maybe we'll make this one on uh, why are there bears so why why are there bears in the area that we're going to and it should be fairly self-evident because we're going into their territory and you'll see i'll spell territory wrong here so let's spell territory wrong and put some extra words and letters in there and it's got a spell check in there so i can easily go in and grab the spell check it's very similar to posting on a social media platform for example so i'll go in here create another chapter on bear safety where we'll talk a little bit about uh well actually let's change it let's go types of bears the different types of bears we're going to have and then we'll do bear safety again i can always modify and make changes here and then publish the course or share the course out and i can even make changes after i've shared it out and those changes will be seen so i'm going in creating my structure so you can see the very quickly for me to uh, put together a quick introduction with four little chapters and now i'm going to go into my bear safety course and here's something amazing i can go into the ai writer and i'll just say write an introduction to a course on uh, bear safety and we're going to specifically be going to the canadian rockies so i'll say make sure that the safety that the introduction you write is based upon the canadian rockies and then when i write it when i click enter the artificial intelligence will actually go through and it'll help me by providing a lot of content now for this particular demonstration i'm going to accept the content that it writes but i would normally change that i'll go into the cover image and i'll put a picture of a bear so it'll build the structure but i'll make some edits in there but now i've got a nice course already starting to take shape i could change the cover image if i wanted to i'm going to go in and i can change the opacity of the cover image so you can you know if you have certain images you want to fade and make the bear safety course stand out a little bit more i can change that as well again with why we hike i'll go in hit space bar and i'll just fill the content here with information on you know why do we like what are the benefits of hiking with friends and what are the benefits of getting outside and, and doing some hiking so you can see that if i if i go through to each of the sections that i've outlined I can start really frameworking a lot of content, not just headers and footers and, and those types of things, but actual content by using the AI writer here. So again, I'll add it in. Once again, I would edit this to my own liking or my own wording, but this sure gives me a, a great starting point for this content. I wanna make it more exciting so I can go in here and I have all sorts of things that I could add myself. So I could put in my own headers, I could put in my own course content materials. So I'll put in my own header here, that hiking club is fun. And maybe I'll put in a quote from a former student. So I'll put in a quote from a former student that had a great time with the hiking club. And you can see that this adds a lot of personality to the course. I don't just wanna use AI to write the entire course. I really am gonna use um, AR more, AI more as a ideation, more as a way to get some some ideas about the content that I might want. And then I may reframe a lot of the things or add or edit, or maybe some of the things that the artificial intelligence provides I'm not going to like. Always put in things like dividers to make reading easier. Things like images can be put in. Things like videos can be put in. Let's uh, put in an uh, image here. So I'll put in an image. And I've, I usually like to download or have a number of images available for every course that I'm creating. So this one here is some hiking boots create a sense of community here. So all my students are going to go hiking, their hiking boots are in a circle, they're all making friends. And it is important, of course, to go through with things like captions to make sure you're putting captions so that if uh, anybody's using any type of assistive technology, that those captions are there. I can upload my own videos, I can link to a YouTube video. Once again, this is where having some notes where I've already found some resources and have those handy. Uh, is, is useful. So I'll grab the URL from the video that I found on hiking the Berg Lake. And uh, this is actually a channel that I subscribe to. I'll link it down below because you should go check it out. And uh, you can see I've now got the link to the YouTube video. But it's, it does, it's sort of floating there without any context. So let's go ahead and put in a header. And I'll say you should watch this video. It's a really good video. So I'll say watch this video. And then what I'm going to do is you can see I can rearrange things once I've typed this in 
and I can put that above the video or the video down below it. So that reads a little bit better. You have a, a title, then you have the link. I could go in and I could do things like grab the title of the video. So this is the title from YouTube of the video and I could pop that in there as well. I could go check to make sure the link is working. So you can see here, this is the, um, the, the video it plays, it goes out to YouTube here. So I'm gonna go there and I'm just gonna pop in a description. So I just copy that from the YouTube, the title of the, the title of the YouTube video that I'm embedding. And I'm really starting to build up a course. Okay, why are there bears? I think this one here, I'll do the types of bears. So what are the types of bears? So I'll change the heading a little bit later on before I publish. So maybe I don't need to say why are there bears? They just simply exist. So maybe that, uh, that chapter could go away, but I'll put in a little AI writing about the different types of bears. Specifically, I'll do again the Canadian Rockies because we'll have grizzly bears and we'll have uh, black bears. Although grizzly bears, I think down in the States, they call them brown bears. Anyways, grizzly bears up here in Canada, in the Canadian Rockies, we call them grizzly bears or we call them black bears. And so uh, both of those types of bears exist in the areas that we hike around here. And so I'll just put that in there. And now when it writes it here, when the AI generates this, it doesn't do a great job of formatting it. And it kind of reads a little bit heavy and a little bit dense. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll insert that in there and then I can go in and I can start breaking it apart. So it makes it a little bit easier to read if I put some spacing in here and then makes it even better. I can delete sections. It makes it even better if I go in here and just click here and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to put in an image. So I'll put in an image of a grizzly bear and I'll put in an image of a black bear. So we'll pop a grizzly bear in here. Now I'm doing this quite quickly. I, I would take some time to enhance things here and I would take time to make sure I have good captions and everything. And you can, there's ed, uh, editing properties, different properties that I can edit on the image. I'll put in a picture of a black bear here. Uh, this is a fun story. This is actually a black bear that I encountered on one of my hikes. So where is he hiding in here? Um, we were setting up uh, our tents on the beach and this little fellow came out and decided to hang around our camp for a little while and basically just ignored him. So bear safety tip. So you not only get to learn how to use iSpring pages, but you get a bonus bear safety tip. We just basically ignored him, ignored him stayed, out of, stayed out of the bear's way and uh and then it just walked away into the woods and we were all good although every sound we heard that night we were freaked out about so i've started to build this really nice little course here i'm not going to build the entire course but i can then go in and share the course once it's ready now when i share the course i can actually make it visible via a link so this link will now take you to this course i can go in and make changes here so I can go and make changes. Um, if you can see here that I could, I could go in and change the colors and such. I could change and put an image behind there if I wanted to as well. So if you look up here, you can see there's this little image box. I could add an image. So if I wanted to put uh, logos or such, I could embed it into a website. I can even restrict it with a password. So if I wanna make this just for members of the hiking club, I can do that. Um, and now I've got my course and I can preview the course. So when I go in to preview the course, you can see that it really formats it nicely. It's got my navigation buttons in here. And this is what the user or the person taking the course will see. I can also, um, up top here, I can also change it so I can see what it looks like on a tablet or a phone and it works very well. So we'll go different types of bears in here. And uh, so there's my course. So I've got this nice bear safety course all ready to go. Now, another thing that I might want to do is add in an exercise at the end of the course so I can put in like a little multiple choice quiz. So you could put this for each chapter. You could put this, um, you can put as many of these as you want, wherever you want them. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to put a little uh, bear safety quiz in here. What should you do if you encounter a bear? And I'm going to give the uh, student or the, the person taking the course, give them a couple of choices. They can run if they see a bear. And uh, just if you if you would have read the material, don't run when you see a bear and you could attack the bear first. Make sure, you know, uh, you know, get the upper hand. That would be a very bad idea. Uh, you could make a noise and that one might be possible or you could just stay calm and assess the situation. So those are your choices in there. And then what I could do is it's actually stay calm. You should assess the situation. 
Uh, sometimes you might say make noise to scare it away. That doesn't always work. So I don't, this isn't a course on bear safety or a video on bear safety. But anyways, first you stay calm, you assess the situation, you determine whether the bear knows you're there, you determine whether the bear is on a different path than you, all sorts of stuff. And then you can also have a correct and incorrect response. When that's done, okay, so we'll say done here. I'm happy with my little exercise that I have here. And you can do standalone quizzes as well as, as objects. So I'm gonna go in here, I'll preview the course again. And this time I'll just navigate right down to the quiz. I will stay calm and you can see I got the question correct. So you can see I've got a really nice way of building courses. If I put the wrong uh, answer in, I'll get that as well. Now that you've seen it in action, I hope that you'll go and give it a try for yourself because you've seen how quickly I can create some really valuable content. And with a little bit more time, I could refine that content even more, get it exactly how I want it with more audio visual, more imagery, more quizzes. You know, I could just expand and I could build upon it. I could even work with others on it. The entire iSpring suite is something that I've obviously become quite enamored with. I like it a lot. And so I have a lot of videos here on the channel about iSpring. And iSpring Pages in particular is something I'm going to use to really help me create additional learning modules, help my students out, let them learn on any device, and I can see the application of this for many other environments. Especially, I can imagine my old life in the hotels and resorts. I, I would have loved to have had this tool. So thank you very much for watching the video. Comment below if you have any questions. I'll try to help you out with that. Or maybe let me know what you're going to use a tool like this for. What kind of micro training do you think would be valuable in your environment? And how do you think this tool can help you with that? Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.